It has been one full year since I started shooting with the M4, and it has changed my life. Now you might be thinking I'm just some like a fanboy that will shell out thousands of dollars with anything with that red Leica logo on it. However, being blessed with the M4 started me on a creative journey that took me through valleys and mountain peaks. It is truly, truly humbling, so make sure you watch till the very end to see my three favorite photos, and also I'm giving away a few film cameras and some films, so stick around to the end. So let's get to the photos, that's why you're here. When I first got the Leica M4, which in itself was an intervention from God himself, I was digitally consumed with the ultra fast paced perfection of virality that content has become today. Basically, if the shot wasn't absolutely perfect and viral enough, it would never see the light of day, and in fact, it would just sit on my hard drives never going anywhere. And it was through the M4 that creatively awakened my spirit to a better way of living and a better way of creating. I know that sounds woo 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 kind of thing, but stick with me here. Artists are in such a weird position now as the, the line for artists and creators are heavily blurred. You basically have to sell your soul to the content algorithmic gods that is the Instagram algorithm, the shorts algorithm, the TikTok algorithm, just to go viral and for your content to be seen. And this is exactly what the world would tell you success looks like. But they're not really looking at the health of the content you're creating or also, more importantly, the health of your soul. But the thing is, as creators, we don't create for the algorithm. We don't create for other people. Most of us got into this for the love of creating. I mean, I'm sure you also feel it. It's like if you don't create, it feels like you're holding in a sneeze. It's just uncomfortable and you know something is wrong. And a lot of us have gotten caught up and lost optimizing our art for the sake of the algorithm. But because of this, we've also sacrificed our creative spirit. I'm not saying to not have any kind of creative social media strategy, but you know the type of content that I'm talking about. In fact, I was even doing this content, whatever I could do to get the clicks, to get the viral, viral shot, no matter what I was doing. But the thing is, we want to be able to live and create well. So personally, if I am measuring the success of my creative work, of my self-worth on an arbitrary number on social media, then I have absolutely failed as a human being and also as a creative. I still have tons of things to learn from this film journey, but I've been mentored or apprenticed or just really watched so much YouTube videos from all of the greats that I am absolutely humbled to be able to practice the same craft that they're practicing. So allow this to inspire you and try something new. Maybe you shoot film and you need to try to expand to digital because film is just so expensive. Maybe you're shooting digital all the time and you need to get back to slowing down so you shoot film for a month. Don't be afraid to fall and get up. Fall and get up and be okay with learning. You're seeing right now some of my very first photos on the M4. And as you can see, they absolutely suck. I didn't know what I was doing, even though I thought I was gonna have some sort of an idea coming from random point and shoots and the Canon A1, the learning curve to going to an external light meter, a rangefinder focusing system, and then also bottom loading uh, film. It was truly humbling, not good photos. You got to crawl before you run. And if I didn't crawl, then I wouldn't have captured my three favorite photos on the M4. And don't forget to continue watching to the very end because I'm giving away a mint condition film camera because I just know it's really difficult to get started. And it's also kind of expensive as well. Coming in third place is this photo that was made in San Diego and the lens I was using was the 35 Sumalux and shooting with Portra 400. I wanted to make sure I got the musician perfectly right behind the fountain 
and I was waiting right there until he made eye contact and I shot the photo. And he was actually a super chill dude as we ended up talking about camera gear and also music and really cool guy. He was totally rocking out. His name's Dan, check him out. My second favorite photo is this photo of my fiance overlooking a valley on a hike on a rainy day. This one was made with the 35 Sumalux once again and a Portra 400. All right, as you can see, I'm not in my room. My battery died and I didn't realize it until I was editing out at a coffee shop. So I'm filming it out here, kind of cool. Nice little change of pace, but let's get back into it. I really like the second photo because it just had a great colors, great lighting with the rain and not rain, and just the different lighting that was happening within the valley. And before we get to my all-time favorite photo, here's an honorable mention, which is taken in the San Bernardino Mountains. And this valley was straight out of Studio Ghibli. The colors of the grass were amazing, the cabin, the sky, it was all around an absolutely amazing shot. This was made with the 35 Sumalux and actually with Gold 200. All right, now we're coming up to the number one favorite photo of mine, but make sure you stick till the end because I got film cameras I'm giving away, giving away rolls of film, and then also a film lab recommendation that literally 10 times my film photos. Favorite shot from the M4 was taken at the Torrey Pines Glider Port. This was shot on the 35 Sumalux with Portra 400. This place is easily the most photographic place that you could ever go to because you've got the paragliders, you've got RC gliders, and you've got people flying falcons like they're literally Pokemon. This is also the spot where I captured one of my favorite digital images to date, where I actually have been working on emulating film within the digital development process. It's really helped me to slow down my editing process and take time as if these were paintings and actual works of art and not just photos. So there you have it, a lot of lessons learned and a lot of lessons to learn, but I still would have never thought in my wildest dreams that I'd be shooting on Leica and making images like these. So I'm incredibly grateful. And a big part of why my film came back so amazing was actually my lab. Before I was using a local lab and I just wasn't too stoked on the results I was getting. And I decided to reach out to Gelatin Labs and they're extremely friendly and very happy to help me and to hold my hand. As I started to learn more about the development and the chemistry and the scanning process. This is not sponsored. I'm just such a huge fan of them that I'm willing to send you guys to them because they're just absolutely amazing. They literally 10 times my film photography. Next, if you want a free roll of film, which let's be honest, who doesn't, go ahead, go to my Instagram. I'll have all of the instructions there for you. Just wanna give back and hopefully help you shoot more film. And then for the cameras, I have the Minolta X700, which I'm actually working on a video right now, showcasing it, showing you guys exactly what you'll be getting. You don't have to do anything, but you definitely may want to subscribe because all of the info will be within that video. So I don't want you guys to miss out or miss the opportunity of being the first in line for this giveaway. And that will be coming out in the next week. Thank you so much for watching and bearing with me as I shoot out in the busy streets of San Diego, but that's just what happens. You just kind of got to roll with the punches.